Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're bringing a keyboard that I've been wanting to take a look at for a little while. A little bank story. Now, I have been buying mechanical keyboards since 2015, but I only bought one every couple of years or so, and usually it was a Kickstarter. Um, not a not group buys. But I do remember uh, right before I really started digging in uh, during the pandemic and there was one keyboard that I don't know as soon as I saw it I wanted it um, I didn't know that I wanted a knob and a screen on a keyboard so badly until I saw Canon Key Satisfaction 75 now I believe it was either four or five hundred dollars when it went on Groupine and I can't say that I did not seriously consider just saying hey um, skipping out on my next GPU so that I can get this keyboard, but in the end, I I decided against it. Um, but it has been one of those keyboards that just it has remained in my lexicon of language that I like as far as keyboards go, uh, which has probably been. One of the reasons that I have a lot of keyboards with knobs and I have a few keyboards with screens. But I do not yet have one with both. Um, or do I? No. Oh yeah, no, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Let me take that back. I do. The, um, the Keyduos NJ68 Pro. This one does have a screen and it has a knob. So... Uh, this one, don't get me wrong, I love this keyboard. And actually, it's, it's not a bad keyboard. Um, it's wireless, and I've used it on the go, though it's kind of hefty. I definitely get looks <laughs> if I pull this out into Starbucks or, 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 you know, doing some work out and about. People are like, what's that? I did at least find a keyboard that kind of satisfied that, but I did like the design satisfaction 75 now this one that we're taking a look at today isn't an exact clone but it's much closer in design language to that um i've been talking with uh josh over at fantech here and there uh for a little while but um when this keyboard came out i was like hey i'd like to take a look at it and we kind of went back and forth and apparently there was a huge demand i know i did see it drop out of stock a few times on um, on Amazon. I have not tried any other Fantech products, though. I believe the 61 that I took a look at, or at least the pictures I looked at, it looked like it was an RK61, if I'm not mistaken. I could be confusing it. But I had, had as of yet, reviewed any of their products. But when this came out, I was like, hey, um, I'd like to take a look at it. He's like, yeah, let me see what I can do. And apparently there was just not, um, the inventory wasn't there there for a little while. So uh, just recently he was like, all right, I was able to get you one. It's on its way, but it's bare bone. And I'm like, that's fine. On Amazon, uh, it sells with um, Gatoron Pro Yellows or Pro Browns. So this one is a bare bone. It's the Fantech Max Fit 81. And as you can see, it has an OLED screen uh, from what I have read and been told by um, Updog, who has one as well. Uh, he's one of the, my uh, co-moderators on Our Budget Keeps. He says that the software is very similar uh, to the NJ81, which also has an OLED screen. So uh, you can upload uh, GIFs to it for the most part. This is a 75% um, with three... Uh, three key column topped off with a knob that I believe should be programmable um, and the OLED which does have some basic information as well as allows you to upload animated GIFs. Now he did also send over a, um, a coiled cable. It's always nice to have a cable that matches um, your keyboard and this one. Oh, actually, this, is, this is pretty nice. Um, there are a lot of uh, of cables out there that um, you know uh, in stock 
companies are now starting to include some cables, but some of the ones I've seen, it's just like, you should have just stuck with a regular one because um, this will just be all sloppy. But this is actually pretty nice. I got to say, I like it, though. Yeah, I guess more like that would make sense. But um, so we got an aviator connector. I uh, can't tell. does not look like it's Cerakoted, so it's probably just... Um, anodized or could be another way but that black definitely feels like it's a part of the metal what's a that's not a bad cable he didn't talk he didn't tell me this was coming so i guess he threw this in because all he was able to do was get a hold of a bare bone which is not a problem because like i said the uh one that it is on amazon is available with uh yellow or Gatoron Yellow Pros and Gatoron Brown Pros. I've got uh, Gatoron Milky Cap V2s or Cap Golds. So these are, I mean, I know they're a little bit different. They sound very similar. So I think that'll do. And I do have a keycap set that I think will work just fine with this. Um, they have a darker version. It's dark frosted. And they have a white frosted. And those, each of those come, this one I think comes with gray a black on gray keycap set and the other one's like a black on white so we do have the standard cable that comes with it it's your standard um uh rubberized usb a to usb c cable looks like it's probably three foot we have a switch and keycap puller and here we are the max fit 81. now uh, immediately from the case just makes me think of um the uh, the translucent feckers or th80s although i guess it'd be more like the th80 because it doesn't have the f13 at the delete key up here so we've got padding right here for the space bar this that always does help in my opinion um we have we have a layer of padding nice thick foam between the plate and the pcb and it looks like we have some dense foam down below this is um wow it's quite similar i don't know if that magnet's supposed to be on the side like that that's kind of odd shouldn't that be because it shouldn't have to go in angled should it all right it's uh it's not exactly the same but it definitely reminded me of the ik-75 and taking a look at it obviously the switch is in a different spot and i don't think we have the dual batteries but there are definitely some similarities um between the two and i just wanted to, to take a look the ik-75 has been rebranded many times over it's pretty popular um so anyway um i do find i, I have to say i find that a little odd um, it almost feels like that was a last minute design decision. I mean, that's not the biggest of deals, except you gotta go in at a bit of an angle to make sure that it's in all the way. And it's not, there we go. So, hmm. I don't know. And what is the battery? On the box, it says long-lasting battery on the go without worrying about battery lasting up to 185 hours of usage. That doesn't tell me the size of the battery. Everyone's usage is going to be different. Yeah, I, I don't see anything about the battery size. Why don't we go ahead and just find out? The old-fashioned way. Feels like an FR4 plate. Hmm. So that's interesting. 
All right, there's the layer. All right, so we got an IPXC sheet and we have foam, actual foam between the plate and the PCB. Well, we literally have a black box. They don't even say. If I had to guess, it's 2,500, 3,000 milliamp hour, perhaps. But, I don't know, I guess that's a simple, uh, simple thing to list. The fact that they don't list it, I don't know. What, I mean, is they trying to hide? I just, I don't get that. All right, so let me plug this back in together. Oh. It's uh, it's quite similar to the IK75, as it does have the connector for an extra battery right there. And that's how it is on the inside of the IK75. All right. Um, so here are some gaskets. But... All they do is attach... I mean, don't they don't attach, but the plate is sitting above that so this is really more of a faux because it's not like I mean I guess it could have some flex but you have to because it's not uh, the PC the plate is not attached to the PCB it does have these um, guiding poles I guess you could call them to where it could slide up and down but it doesn't have even just by itself right here, it doesn't have any flex, but it's, I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, this is more of one of those faux flex boards. Anyway, um, I usually tend to take these out as they're, they do more muting than anything else, but we're sticking stock here. So, oh, I guess I need to do this before I do the plate. Here, and then here. At least the construction is easy to open up and take apart. I definitely plan to come back to this. It is south facing and we are going to, um, I don't think I want to see. There's only one review on Amazon and it says poor soldering. I didn't really take a look at that. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. There's flux all over the place. This is... Yeek. I mean, this is one of... Oh my goodness. Um, there is so much flux over this board. This is... Honestly, uh... I'm not very good at soldering, and I think I could have done a better job than that. That is messy. It's crossing lanes. Ew. And it has a QC pass sticker. Huh. Yeah, that's, um... That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. And here's another gasket faux, faux gasket mount thing. Um... The USB port is right on the uh, PCB, so if you actually did add some flex to it, you would have to make that hole a little bit bigger because there's really no play in there. So, all right, well, uh, guess I'm glad I looked. I mean, that's the only review that sits on Amazon right now, and I know it's been listed there for a while, so... Uh, that's kind of disappointing, honestly. All right, let's see about these stabilizers. Well, they are well attached to this FR4 plate. And, um, you could definitely say that they've been lubricated. They have been over-lubricated. Yeah, it is, uh, I guess they want to make sure they didn't miss it. That's just, uh, it just makes for a messy... messy 
Yeah. Well, at least the stabs don't have to be, the feet of the stabs don't have to be clipped. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this on. Make sure we're in the guide posts. And then close her back up. And we do have a little max fit badge there on the front as well. So, pretty simple snap and shut. Uh, this is a common, it's got the, the shallow, the shallow collar, but it's a D knob. Before we put any switch or anything in, let's go ahead and take a look at the screen and this RGB. Ah. All right, so it has decently bright RGB. Probably need the keys to switch to that. It's showing the date and the time. So I'm guessing you're gonna have to set it in here. Lost my camera when I plugged in. So um, right off the bat, one of the things that catches me, probably because of the angle that I'm at, but I've seen this on a few PCBs and I really, I fail to understand how it makes it to this point. Cause I mean, product development and software development have a lot of crossover and I've been part of a lot of software products and there's a lot of proof of concepts before you get to actually building anything that's going to even remotely be in production. I mean, and some, some corporations literally want a whole test, you know, basically a, a functional proof of concept. And then what did you learn from that to go and build the actual product? How this goes past PCB design, and I'm not by any means a PCB designer. I understand the basic concepts of the software and I understand some basic 3D development. I, I doesn't make me design engineer. But how that gets past any sort of uh, project management or QA, QC of the development process, not when this goes to the this should have been fixed before it went to the PCB factory. But that's done because of the USB connector. Almost certainly guarantee. But, I don't know. It's just, the RGBs are set in a certain direction. A lot of times because people want to use Shine 3 keycaps. And if they have south facing, they'll use front. But that's just going to, those two keys are going to look blank. And it's going to make the entire keyboard look a little funky and I don't know I just we've got the very poor PCB soldering with a lot of flux all over the place we've got two LEDs just flipped because there wasn't enough space or whatever they didn't design it right it's already like I want to enjoy this part which We'll get to, but I still want at least a functional keyboard in the first place. So, that said, I'm going to go ahead and continue building. I've got the gold V3 cap milkies. I don't know how many names they can attach to them. It has this hollow hole at the bottom. But, they sound, they feel very similar to milkies. And this is, uh, they have Gatoron Pros. I have some Gatoron Pros around here, but... Not sure where they're at at the moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with these caps. And yeah, I'm pretty sure I have enough. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the switches. And pull out the key caps. And then we'll uh, finish up and see what I what I think of this. I, I definitely am going to come back and, and mod this. Um, I do believe I can get some more flex. But I'm definitely going to have to, uh, to make some um, changes to the case. To give that port room to flex. But, because I mean, put together, there's no flex whatsoever. So, but let's just see how the rest of it works. So let me go ahead and load up these switches and then uh, we'll be back. For All right, here we got the switches loaded up. The FR4 plate is definitely a little tight on tolerances, but I made all the switches go in nice and smooth. Now for keycaps, I actually found this the other day when I was cleaning up. Um, I was sick, I couldn't talk. I, mean, I could, but I just sounded like poo. And um, I was cleaning up a little bit. And this was behind my shelf. And I'm like, what is this? It's a 
USA side transparent black keycaps. So that's an Amazon sticker, so I definitely bought these off of Amazon. And they appear to be the black, um, kind of like frosted, kind of like the cases with a double shot for the legends. And I thought, hey, this actually would look good on here. So I'm going to go ahead and put these keycaps on here. I do believe they are cherry profile. They definitely look like it. And here we are, the MaxFit 81 from Fantech, fully loaded with Gatoron Milky Yellows, Cap and Pro. Um, and there's an interesting keycap set. Uh, it does appear to be an OEM. It's double shot, and it's kind of like a pudding. It has a double shot only at the top, and the sides of the body are clear. So, should make for an interesting RGB display. Wow, actually, yeah, that's pretty good. But as you can see, these two keys, nothing's, it looks like nothing's going on. Otherwise, I actually think this uh, keycap set actually does a really nice job on here. Um, from initial impressions, it sounds like it's going to be a little bit of a clacky uh, board. I am going to plug it in and take a look at the software real quick um, back come, before I come back and actually do my closing thoughts on this. But for right now, I think uh, let's get into the technical details. Although battery, we're just guessing. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Fantech MaxFit 81. This is a 75% ABS kit with three mode connectivity. It includes a D knob for volume and mute, as well as a programmable OLED screen. The weight of this keyboard is 801 grams fully loaded with switches and keycaps and 550 grams bare bone as we received it today. As stated, it is an ABS plastic semi-translucent case it does have a battery, but it does not state the size. This keyboard MSRP is for $129 pre-built with Gatoron and PBT keycaps, as well as $95 bare bone as we took a look at today. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters off the typing surface, while the back sits at 33, providing you an angle of 6 degrees. It if using the middle feet, you will raise the back up to 39 millimeters, providing a typing angle of 9 degrees. With the final pair of feet, you raise the back up to 46 and a half millimeters with 12 degree typing angle. Now, do note this board does have south facing LEDs, except for the F6 and the F7 key are north facing, most likely due to the PCB and USB configuration. So anyway, uh, took a look at the software. Um, it's your standard uh, software. It's exactly the same as the Key Duos and several other company software, um, where it, it's blank and then it you know it loads up the keyboard when it detects it, and it has the app update and the firmware update. Now this one, the software did say that it needed to be updated, but when I pressed the key, it said your stop, your driver is the latest. So, but it just kept doing that. Anyway, I did not notice that the screen was monochrome. Uh, I went back and looked at the listing and it says interactive screen. It didn't say colorful. Um, I just assumed that it was. I didn't know that it was uh, OLED. Now granted, you do Bongo Cat and many different um, monochrome gifts out there. That's fine. But it does seem that you lose the ability to scroll through the different screens that it has if you don't have the GIF up there. So um, just, a, just a little thing. That and the battery size. Why don't they list the battery size? I don't get it. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, a while back, stock keyboards sounded like stock keyboards. Like, okay, that's, yeah, I, you, that definitely sounds like something. That's why I think a lot of um, YouTubers would go right into modding the keyboard and then doing a sound test. I prefer to first just do a stock sound test, and for a lot of a lot of keyboards I've done, it's like ooh, you know. But it's still, hey, I mean, 
you want to hear what it sounds like at first. It doesn't mean that you might not, you're not going to get it. It just means you can kind of guesstimate how much work you're going to put into it or if it's worth putting any work into it. But, and the exception was that, oh, it actually sounds decent. Like, I'm going to have to do very little work to get this sounding much better. Uh, but nowadays, we're seeing a lot of in-stock products. I'm coming across more and more keyboards that sound great in stock and um, require very little to no tuning at all. And it's the exception that I get a stock keyboard that sounds poopy. This one, I think they did a pretty good job stock. It does have the FR4 plate, which as far as I can recall is the first time that I've seen it in an in-stock keyboard. Um, it does have a nice amount of dampening. The IPXE sheet, some will say it makes a pop. I believe the PE foam sheet does better at pop. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing uh, the tape mod, and I think silicone um, is going to be best for here, though some of me says some kill mat might be great in there as well. If you guys have any suggestions for um, for the mods, because I'm definitely going to be coming back to this, please leave the comments below. Um, and also, if you have any questions about this, let me know. I'll do my best to answer. Um, but I I like how it sounds. I mean, it's, it's, it's decent sounding stock keyboard for the 95 dollars if you really want a screen and don't mind it being monochrome and you want a knob i mean bare bone it's not that bad for a little bit more you're going to be able to get some switches and some key caps for it um but and their gator on so and gator on pros so you've got that choice it's i would like to see it a little bit cheaper but i mean I know I wanted something that met the satisfaction 75 or I, I know it's not a satisfaction 75 it's not even you know CNC lumen just kind of looks like it it's got that design it's got that feel that's what I like so I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this max fit 81 from Fantech um, loaded up with the Gatoron cat v2s and these um, ABS double shot OEM keycaps with the clear sides. Um, and as always, until the next transmission, do keep calm and keep it on. <laughs>